we have an amazing show for you with the newest and coolest from the world of Beyblade, including a rare sneak peek into the Beyblade Battle Association headquarters and a behind the scenes look at how the Beyblade show is made. I hooked up with the director of the BBA at the elusive BBA headquarters. Check this out. I'm looking for the entrance to the BBA. Now to keep it secret, they change it once a month. That's why they're giving me this map. But I think it's just around the corner. BBA headquarters. Hey, it's Daniel. I'm here to show some of my friends inside the BBA headquarters. Hey, Holly. Oh, hi, Daniel. I'm here to see John, director of the BBA. Oh, sure, let me just get him for you. Right. Hey, John, hey, John, Daniel's here. here. Send him up? Oh. Okay, thanks. Hey, John. Daniel, how are you, man? Good, how are you? Good, good. Have a seat. Thanks. So listen, I wanted to ask you a couple of Beyblade questions. Is that cool? Yeah, shoot. So tell me, how did Beyblade come to North America? Well, Beyblade first started in Japan. It launched there about five years ago. And in Japan, a lot of properties come out of manga comics. These are published every week in Japan. Kids read them. Each one has about 20 to 30 different comics in it. Kids will read it, vote on the ones they like, and then those are then made into TV shows. Where does the name Beyblade come from? The first part of the word is Bay, which means it's short for Beigoma, which in Japan means spinning top. And the second part, Blade, well, that comes from the attack ring. So what other countries have held BBA tournaments? BBA tournaments have been held all over the world. They first started in Japan, and since then we've held events in Canada, the US, all throughout Europe, countries like France, Germany, Spain, the UK, down in Latin America, Peru, Chile, Mexico, pretty much all over the world. And right now we're in the process of planning the Beyblade World Championships, which are gonna be held later this year at a top secret location. We're gonna be flying in the top bladers from all over the world to compete for the title of World Beyblade Champion. Now, what can you tell me about the new hard metal series Beyblade? Well, the hard metal series is pretty top secret right now, but I can give you a bit of a sneak peek. This is what it's going to look like, and it features a whole different system. It's, it's going to take Beyblade to the next level. Let's go behind the scenes with Beyblade and check in with Dustin. He creates the English effects for the show. We're in the effects room with our sound effects editor, Dustin. Hey, Dustin. Hey, Dan. How you doing? Good, man. Dustin's going to show you how he creates the English effects for Beyblade. I've got a clip of episode 117 up here. I'm just gonna walk you through what I do to uh, get everything happening sound effects wise. First thing I would do is just watch the scene by itself and sort of get a feel of what's going on. Wanna consider first is what's going on around them. Is it daytime, is it nighttime, is it raining, are they inside, are they outside, etc. As you can see, right now they're outside and it's nighttime. So maybe some crickets, because crickets happen at nighttime. So now that I've got that happening, you watch the scene a couple of times and say, okay, what am I missing? So, I figure there's a lot of Beyblades flying around, so I'll throw in some Beyblade sounds. And last but not least, we need Drigger's Roar. So I'll throw that in there. And there you have it. Those are the sound effects. Well, sounds awesome, Dustin. Thanks so much for that. Dustin's been working hard, so I'm gonna make my own sound effects as I exit. <laughs> hey, guys, we're in the control room, another place where I work, and these are the guys who make the Beyblade characters sound good. We have John, our voice director. We got Sal, our sound engineer. Sound engineer's assistant, Aaron. And in the back, we have Tina, our wonderful producer. You'll notice that I cast a lot of kids on the Beyblade show, and they're age appropriate too for the characters that you see in there, as opposed to casting adults, which normally we do in animation. Now, what you might not know is that all the characters come in and record their voices individually. Now, when we come in, we stand at our microphone here. We have our wonderful headset here. We have our Beyblade script with our lines in it, and we also have to follow what's called the Rhythma Band. Now, we have to follow this in order to get our timing right of our character's mouth moving. I 
understand how you must feel about your blade, Daichi. But you know, there's nothing any of us can do to change the past. Uh, I am Alex. I uh, play Kenny on the show Beyblade. I'm very, very similar to my character on Beyblade. Um, I, I like Kenny. I'm a long-winded, uh, long-winded nerdy boy. I think one of my favorite storylines from Beyblade is when Ray's character went back to the White Tiger team. As you guys know, Ray started out with the White Tigers, but then he left to travel with the BBA and the Blade Breakers. Um, when you see him go back home to his roots and his best friends that he grew up with, it's kind of a nice story. And I think doing that episode um, really sort of made me feel good about doing this character. Daichi, no! No! Relax, Daichi, that won't solve anything. The two lines again. Okay. We had noise and relaxed Daichi that won't solve anything. And the realization wasn't there. Hi, I'm Marlo, and I play Tyson on Beyblade. I think I'm similar to Tyson in the way that I'm, I'm arrogant and uh, pretty cocky. But at the same time, I don't think I'm quite as cocky as Tyson is. And, well, I don't like to eat as much as he does either. Drones are attacked now! This isn't over yet. Hi, my name's David. I play the character Kai on Beyblade. And uh, Kai is kind of a strong, silent guy, and I'm not really. I'm kind of outgoing and happy, but I get in those moods where I kind of feel like Kai, and that's what I kind of channel when I'm in the room doing the voice. Remember to keep checking Beyblade.com for all the latest BBA information. From Space Center Houston, I'm Daniel DeSanto signing off. I'm Daniel DeSanto, the voice of Ray on Beyblade. I'm here in Houston, Texas at the NASA Space Center checking out the BBA North American Championships. This is my competition, Beyblade, because it shows the inner me and how I can defeat all of my other friends. This is my best Beyblade because um, I'm working on this new move and this move only works with this Beyblade. It's, it's like the best out of all 12. And the move's called Waterfall, but I can't do it yet. It's fast, and it goes under the Beyblade, and because people think it's small, they think they can beat it easily, but it doesn't beat that easily. The tournament here at the NASA Space Center is well underway. Now, our East and West Coast champions did battle a few months ago at regional qualifying contests. Here are their journeys into the big leagues. Behind me are several hundred contestants battling for the right to play these two players in the final showdown that will crown the BBA North American Beyblade champion. Now, beside me is West Coast winner, Sean Lyons from Roswell, Atlanta. And over here is BBA East Coast winner, Stephen Franklin from Milford, Connecticut. How you guys doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I can't wait to go to the blader dish. I'm doing great and I can't wait to win. All right, well, throughout the show, we will follow these two Beyblade champions as they get ready to do battle in the final. Now, they flew in last night with their families, and we were at the airport to greet them. Peep this action. Here come the heavyweight. 
Generation Beyblade Spinning in motion Causing a commotion What's your biggest challenge for the tournament? I think the hardest part of the, of the tournament for me will, will probably be um, battling someone who I don't know what Beyblade they have and what their strategy is, so I can't analyze their style, and also my nerves. I'm really uh, pretty confident in myself and in my abilities because if I can win once in New York, what's saying it's going to stop, anything's going to stop me in Houston. Can I get your autograph? The celebrities are in the house. Thanks, man. 18,000 people attended the first Beyblade World Championships in Tokyo, Japan. This is crazy, guys. We are in round 11, and we're going to show you some of the bladers to watch out for. Danielle's technique is to aim for the walls to stay out of the pockets. Yovan has moved up fast with his solid launch technique, and Colin is all about defensive tactics. Let it rip! One of the newest ways to bay battle is the Beyblade trading card game. I decided to get schooled. Hey guys, I'm here with Kyle from Decipher, and Kyle's gonna take us through the new Beyblade trading card game. How's it going, Kyle? Very good, sir. All right, well, can you take us through this and explain to us a little bit? Absolutely. Um, each person starts out um, in the game with one blade, which is their blade for their deck, All right. and a 60 card deck. And then at the, be uh, at the beginning of the game, each person looks at their spin number and puts that many cards underneath their, uh, their blade from the top of their deck. Okay. After that, we each draw five cards and we're right. ready to start battling. Yeah. The objective of the game is to knock all your opponent's cards out from under their deck. So what you want to do is you want to lead off with a color. And we're going to follow this wheel here. So okay. if you lead off with a red, I'd have to block you with a yellow. So I'm going to start off with the green then. I'm going right. to put that there in my battle pile. Green, uh, I, have to, I have to try and block with a blue. And then you get to okay. keep pressing with a red if you, can, if you have okay. one. Okay, I got a red. Let's see what happens, battle pile. All right, um, I don't have anything to block you, so you're gonna win the fight. Yeah! So we match up, here's how you do damage. Here's how you knock cards out from your opponent's deck. Okay. You match them up, and each little pip that matches up, I take one damage. So one one little pip matches up, so I'm gonna lose one card out from nice. my, my spin pile. First person to lose all the cards out from under their spin pile again, game's Loser. over. All right. Let it rip, freak! Let it rip, this is the best big lane! in Houston. Here are some top bladers to watch out for. Dominic's intimidating hair has helped him get to the final four. Garth's winning streak may be over. Nolan is a fierce competitor and has what it takes to go all the way. And Chris's powerful launch technique puts him through to the semifinals. No! Yesterday, we caught up with the East Coast and West Coast winners and had a little chat about their strategies, plans for victory, and their chances of winning it all. This is my Beyblade box. I've organized it in a way so creating Beyblades is easy. I have my Beyblade in these plastic cases. They originally fit into a tackle box. I have my attack type attack rings. I have my defense type attack rings. And then my endurance type. Now, I usually have them ordered in chronological order, but my collection is extremely disorganized now. The best part about Beyblade competition is just staying focused and not losing sight of what you need to get done. I mean, so what if you lose? I mean, you had a good time. I mean, you came to somewhere great and you just participated in something that's gonna be, you're probably gonna remember for a long time. I know that Beyblade physics is mainly composed of angular physics, torque, drag, and Newton's third law of motion. I'm superstitious in um, some ways. Um, I have lucky charms. I don't, I don't really believe in bad luck. I have, um, my stepdad gave me this before I left this morning. It's the um, comedy and tragedy masks. And um, he brought it to the tournament when I won in uh, New York, so it's gonna bring me good luck. Being treated like a star is kind of interesting because people yeah. my own age are actually, like, you know, running up to me and asking for my autograph. It's kind of unusual because at school I'm not all that popular. Um, I think I have a one in three chance of winning because everyone, I mean, there are three people. I don't know anything about them. I think this is all, this is gonna be pure luck if I win or if I lose. 
I think I have um, the other contestant figured out, but until I, until I know who wins the Houston tournament, I won't be sure what my chances of winning will be. Three, four, come on! <laughs> Over 100,000 people have attended BBA tournaments around the world. All right, guys, we're at the semifinals at the NASA Space Center, Houston. It's down to Chris, Ben, Nolan, Dominic. Oh, man, I'm getting excited. Nolan and Chris start off the final four, and the battle is fierce. But Nolan's attack-type blade gives him the extra edge. And that moves him through to the finals. Now it's Dominic and Ben's turn to go head to head in the other semifinal match. But Ben's blade mounts a vicious attack, and Ben raises the roof, moving to the final against Nolan. The two semifinal winners square off in the finals. Both Nolan and Ben have good launches, and with their similar blade configurations, the match is tight. At one point, it looked like Ben was going to take it, but Nolan squeaks out the win and moves on to the North American Championships, facing the East Coast and West Coast champions. All right, well now, listen, you're going against the East Coast and the West Coast champions. What are you gonna do differently to win those? Focus much harder. As any serious blader will tell you, leading edge technology can be the difference between a battle win or loss. So we went to the source, Steve Bono at Hasbro Research and Development to show us the newest Beyblade gear. How you doing, Steve? Very good, thanks. All right, so can you take us through the new gear here? Sure. The latest Beyblade tops are going to be the series of engine gear tops. These tops come with a turbo winder that you attach to the bottom. You ratchet it up for extra power. And then when it's all the way wound, when you launch the top, it spins with an extra burst of speed to give you that advantage in battle. And this is a launcher that does not require a turbo winder or a ripcord. It's self-wound and released with a button. This is an engineering schematic drawing of one of the latest HMS tops. The hard metal system is designed with drawings first, and then model makers build each of the tops based on the schematics here in this drawing. Well, this is what you've been waiting for, and the winner will be going on to the World Beyblade Championships in a top secret location. Remember to keep checking Beyblade.com for the latest updates. <laughs> What's going to happen is we're going to call our three finalists up on the stage to compete against for the uh, North American Championship. We're going to give them each one Beyblade. They're going to pick it out of the bag. Whoever gets the two reds are going to go against each other first. Then after that, it's a round robin. They all participate against each other. After the three rounds, whoever's got the most points is our winner. East and West are battling against each other up first. This is going to be a great battle. Let's have a look. A total of three points are available in this round. The capacity crowd goes wild as the two out-of-town heavyweights let it rip. The stakes are high for these champions. What's your strategy? Defense and endurance. The battle is well fought in the stadium. Oh. Is that you on top there? Yeah. You gotta change it up for the next one. Yeah. But Sean prevails as he takes all three points to the next round. All right, Sean, you're up three points. How do you feel, man? I feel pretty good about this, but you can't be sure. He looks pretty tough. Nolan is trying to stay calm as Sean works his winning strategy. The intellectual guy has got the upper hand. He's already got three points in just two competitors. He has definitely got the edge. Let's see what happens. Sean, AKA the professor, drops some science on Nolan's blade. We're here in the second game and already we've got two ties. This is crazy. These competitors are so well matched that there's already been two ties. But Nolan's blade proves too strong for the professor taking a point in their final battle. Now, Nolan meets Steven in the next round. Nolan, you're up against the East Coast champion. What do you think of your opponent? I think he's really tough. He made it this far. I think he's pretty tough right now. The crowd chants for the local hero as he takes on the East Coast champion. Steven knows he has to win some points here or it's all over. The battle rages in the stadium. This is the last battle. It's coming up right now. Let's take a look. Nolan, AKA the Buzzsaw, decimates Steven, taking all three points and winning the championship. The crowd goes wild and it all proves too much for Steven as he lets his emotions flow. Final results, Nolan four points, Sean three, Steven zero. Nolan just got crowned the BBA North American Beyblade champion. How do you feel, man? I feel really, really great. Really, really great. I, I just want to say thank you to my brother who couldn't be here right now. Whoa, what a battle. Remember to keep checking Beyblade.com for all the latest BBA information. From Space Center Houston, I'm Daniel DeSanto signing off. Let it rip!